Let's talk about repairs using the H fitting splice union. Boeing calls this a BACC42W and you can find information about this in the various Boeing manuals in chapter 20. I'm looking at the 747 manual right now and that's in 20-11-05. In the case here we have a damaged end fitting and that's one of the most common things we find is that right where a union is that the tube will be leaking on the tube side of the fitting. Now we always recommend replacing the union as well. So if you've got this leak, you're gonna, you're gonna do a tube splice repair and put a new union in there just for good measure. You can inspect that union and if the union looks okay and seems to be leak proof and you, you pressure test it afterwards, go ahead and use that, that old union. I don't have a problem with that. But most of the time we just go ahead and replace it and we're done with it. So in this situation here, we have a leaking end fitting. So we're going to go to the Mosfell repair kit and we're going to pull a tube that will replace the end fitting and we're going to do a splice with the Sierras and Harrison H fitting. All my maintenance references are going to be to the Boeing manual and I'm going to cite AMM chapter 20-11-05 for this example that we're doing on the 747-400. The first thing we have to do is we have to determine where we're going to put the splice and there has to be enough room for the splice. Now you need to realize that there are limitations to where this union can be used. You can't use it in a hot section fire zone, someplace like inside an engine compartment where temperatures are much higher. You also cannot use this on an oxygen system. You cannot use it on a system that has potable water. Refer to your manufacturer's maintenance manuals for restrictions on this where you can and cannot use this device. The maintenance manual that we're following, we're going to follow this, we're going to follow these instructions, but we're also primarily going to use the manufacturer's maintenance manual. The maintenance manual from Boeing, in this case, or Airbus, shows us that on my Boeing 747 that I need to make a cut and I've determined that I can use this fitting for this repair. So I'm going to make a cut using a chipless cutter. So we pull this chipless cutter. The chipless cutter we're showing here has a handle and, and you might have to loosen some clamps to do this on the airplane or you might have to take it off. One warning is the reason that you try to keep it on the airplane is so that you don't get this thing rotated and get the bends facing the wrong, the wrong direction. Also, by leaving the ends attached at the airplane, having these hard points, you'll make sure that you get the proper length of tube. In this case, we take this chipless cutter. We don't want, we, we don't want any metal chips down in our hydraulic system. We take the chipless cutter, and I can pull this out and, and use it the easy way. I'm, I'm going to take this center section out and use it by hand because the particular clamp that I have in this situation, I can, I can fit this in here better. Once I start cutting with this, depending on what you're cutting, aluminum is pretty easy, but, but if you're cutting something like titanium or stainless steel, it takes a pretty hard blade on this chipless cutter. And you might have to replace the blade, especially if somebody's used this five or six times. We're going to make, make the cut on here, and once we make the cut, we need to get in here and try to knock the burr off the inside. We need to do this so that we do not get metal chips down inside the tube. In this case, we're, we've got a plunger, a rubber plunger on the end of this deburr tool that's going to go inside. When we pull the deburr tool out, it's going to extract the chips. We need to knock all the chips off of the plunger so that when, if we put this in another tube, we don't turn around and put chips from this tube right back into another tube. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Once we have this deburred, we're going to fit this up. This union needs to be in the center of the splice. We don't want it off to one side. We don't want the union to grab tube, grab an inch and a half of tube on one side and only grab an eighth of an inch on the other side. We're going to have a splice that will leak. It won't be a safe splice. So by getting this thing centered, first I'm going to mark it with a marker. Next, I'm going to put a little narrow band of speed tape on there because what will happen is once we put the nut on here, we won't be able to see our mark. 
But with the speed tape, we can feel our mark. We can feel it sliding the fitting. I slide my fitting on, and I slide it on both ends. Once you start tightening this fitting, it's not going to come apart. Don't play with this fitting. Don't sit there at break and screw this thing down with your fingers and look at it and screw it down again and tighten it and then all of a sudden you'll find that this interference fit is tight and you ain't getting it off. These things aren't cheap. Uh, and the other thing is, is if you're AOG in the middle of nowhere, you, if you took the last one in the case, then you got a real problem on your hand. Once we slip this on here, we get exactly where we want it. We check to make sure that the union splice is in the center, referring to our manufacturer's maintenance manuals, as always. Get this thing in the center, and then we're going to start tightening it. We're going to tighten it. There's, there's a torque listed. However, you want this thing tight. And once you've got it on there, it ain't coming off. The next step is you're going to have to pressure test it. You're going to pressure test it, leak test it to system hydraulic pressure inspect it, buy it off.